In this episode, we will be looking at Python code analysis. Python code analysis can be a bit of a heavy subject, but it can also be very helpful in making your progress, your programs better. There are several Python code analyzers that you can use to check your code and see if they conform to standards. Pilot is probably the most popular, and it's very configurable, customizable, and pluggable too. There is also another project called PyFlex, which we'll be looking at in this episode too. But we'll start with PyLint because it's much more popular and more well known. So if you don't have it, you can use pip to install it. Just do pip install PyLint or sudo pip install PyLint. I already have it installed or I'd show you what that looks like. And next up, we just need to create some code to look at for it to analyze. So let's create some code that's uh, actually really bad. Or at least so it has some, some problems in it. So here's the code example I created. And basically it has some issues in it. I don't know if you'll be able to figure it out by the time before we actually run the code. But if you want to, you can pause here and actually try to read the code and guess what PyLint is going to highlight. All right, enough writing around. Let's see if we can get PyLint to uh, actually do something with this code. So first we're going to save it. So let's save it to our code folder. And we'll just call it crummy code. And then we'll have PyLint analyze it. So we need a terminal. So let me bring up one of those. All right, popped up in the wrong spot, but hey. All right, so we have documents and code. Then you can just run PyLint against your crummy code example. And it should come up with a bunch of output if you're, doing, if you're doing this right. Okay, so you can see it printed out a whole bunch of stuff. So let's make this a bit bigger so we can see what's going on. And I'll scroll up and see what's going on here. All right, so there's no config file found. So it just uses this default configuration, which is what I usually use. The only reason you want to create a config file is if you want to uh, really configure PyLint so that you know there's some things that you might want to ignore that you know are going to be in your code like you might use camel case and it'll highlight that and you just don't care because that's in your code spec but it uh, PyLint usually follows uh, Python's code spec PEP8 and if your company's organization or organization uses a different code spec or slightly different code spec then you may need to suppress some of these warnings so anyway, you need to kind of figure out what these what all this stuff means so C is for convention, R is for re is a refactor suggestion, W is warning, and E is error. So if we look at this, we can see all kinds of convention problems. There's trailing white space, missing module doc strings, empty doc strings. And I usually look for the errors and the warnings. They're probably the ones that are most important to fix. These other ones matter if you have to follow PEP8, basically, the convention ones. So E is an undefined variable platform on line 13. So let's see what it's talking about. Line 13, let me drag this up a little bit. Maybe we can see, no, oh, this is just a little bit. Let me resize the window. There we go. So that's a line 11, 12, 13. So it's complaining because platform isn't imported. So we made a mistake, we didn't import platform. Let's go back and see what else is wrong with this. And there's also too many positional arguments for method call on line 16. So let's take a look at that. So line 16, get weight. Move this back so you can see what line I'm on. So we'll call them get weight with one, two, three, and it takes one argument. So that's what that's talking about. And we have one more error. Method should have self as the first argument on line 18, which is this one, I believe. So whenever you create a class, you always want to start with this, I mean with a self, as your first argument. So to fix some of the errors, we can edit this and add that self. And we can import platform. And let's see, what was the other error? Too many positional arguments. So we can't call it with three arguments, we're going to call it with two. 
or one, I mean. So let's actually get rid of all the errors if we rerun this. We also have a warning unused import of sys. So we're not actually using sys in this particular class, so we can actually remove this. Now that we've cleaned up the code, let's rerun this and see what we get. Okay, my code is rated at minus 0.83. If we scroll up, you see before it was minus 1333. Let's see if we can find somewhere in here. There we go. So now we just have conventions and warnings and our, our refactors. So if you want, you want to get your score better, you have to keep changing up and following these directions until you get all of them gone, and then it's going to be happy again. You know, you'll probably get a 10, or at least a 9 anyway. If you want to, you can go and look up how all this other stuff works. you got a lot of metrics and statistics that you can go through and figure out how to make your code better. So it's got convention, number, previous, difference, blah, blah, blah. Messages, trailing white space, empty doc string gives you gives you all kinds of good stuff that you need to know about your code. And I would just recommend reading Python's documentation to figure out what it's talking about. So let's go on and look at PyFlakes, because it's also a, a newer and slightly different take on Python code analysis. Alright, so let's go back to that code that we just changed and revert it so it has all the problems in it that it had before. Oh, I reverted a little too far. Um, let's see, we do. There we go, we got the code back. And now it's all crummy up again. So let's run PyFlex against it and see what, what issues it finds. One note that I want to bring up is that PyLint and PyFlex are static code analysis, to analysis tools, which means that they won't actually run your code. They'll just kind of read it in kind of like text and check it for errors. So you don't have to worry about it messing up your database or accessing any, any kind of outside stuff that your code would normally do if it's set up that way, because it, that stuff is statically checking it. It doesn't actually run any of the code. OK, so we type PyFlex, and we type Chrome code, and hopefully this is just going to work. All right. So this one doesn't do conventional stuff. It just points out uh, errors, like serious errors. So, or I guess this isn't really a serious error, but it's an undefined import. And then we have an undefined name platform because we didn't import it. But it really doesn't tell us any of that other good stuff. And But you will notice that it was super fast at returning the output compared to Pilot. But Pilot also gave us a lot more information. So anyway, yeah, things it didn't catch, which might be important because your code won't run, is it didn't catch that we did, needed to add that self back. Your code's probably not going to work right if you don't have self here. So that's kind of a bummer that PyFlake still doesn't catch that. But and I think there was another error too. Let's see. Let's go back up and find out what that other error, error was. Oh, it's just the self one. Okay. And it does do, 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 do the warning, undefined variable. Oh, it also didn't catch the too, the too many positional arguments. So, you know, if you need PyFlex, you need to keep that in mind that it doesn't catch as much as PyLint. And I actually think PyLint's more accurate. But it is another tool that you can have in your toolbox, and it's worth knowing about. So anyway, I would say that your next step would be to try running PyLint and PyFlex against some of your own code. Or against a Python package that you may have downloaded, such as SQL Alchemy or that LXML package we looked at previously, and just see what kind of output you get from it. You also, one cool thing about PyLint is that it's integrated with many popular Python integrated development editors, such as uh, WinRAR's IDE or Editra, or even PyDev has an integration or a plugin for PyLint. So you may find that actually in your IDE, whereas PyFlex usually isn't included. So anyway, just something to FYI about. In the meantime, I recommend just going out there and trying, trying this out on your own code or other people's code and see what you get back.
Have fun and thanks for watching.